Cell Glass. Um, just doing my video log as I usually do. Um, basically, the purpose of this video log is now to um, basically get comfortable uh, doing these. I, I, I had stopped doing. I was doing them previously, uh, but unfortunately, I had to stop because of um, you know circumstances and. Uh, situations that were kind of out of my control and I had no time to really uh, put one down unfortunately but now you know I got a little bit more time I've been able to manage my time a little bit better so uh, hopefully this can uh, help somebody you know get to where they need to go to okay well uh, the next thing I want to say is I guess um, the reason for this personal one I um I saw something today that kind of um, really disturbed me in a sense. The thing that I saw was about a young woman is uh, basically preaching the gospel with her self-exposed. And she calls herself the gospel from the stripper pole. Now... You know, I don't know what prompted her to do this or anything like that. And I'm not going to sit here and try to uh, analyze or psychoanalyze her, her reasoning for that. But I do say that I'm not going to call her a heathen or a false teacher or anything like that because I don't know what or who God has ordained her to be. However, um, I will say that you have to be mindful about how you present yourself in the body of Christ. You know, we as the body of Christ have to be mindful of how we present ourselves because we are not the only ones who are looking at us. The world, believe it or not, whether they choose to admit it or not, uh, do take us seriously, probably more seriously than we take ourselves. Um, that being said, we have an obligation to uphold the laws and the rules that God has already set in place. You know, uh, we have to live a life according to his word and to his doctrine. We can't just lean into our own understanding. We can't just go and believe things the way we want to believe them. And then just say, well, and cover it with, well, you know, only God can judge me. Uh, judge lest you be judged. And, you know, uh, looking at one and uh, forsaking the other. You know, we can't hide behind, you know, the fear of judgment. Because we, as, as his followers and as his people, will one day judge the Lord. How can we do that if we're looking ugly ourselves? Okay, it's Jesus who cleans us up. It's Jesus who cleans who takes care of us, but we still have an obligation to do it the right way. It's like being in a relationship. If you were in a relationship with somebody, would you want that person run around acting like they're single? No. You want them to be in that relationship with you wholeheartedly, and you'll want them to appear as if they're in a relationship with you. You know, even when you're not around. If that makes sense. So, once again, my whole point of this was to address this issue. And so that's what I'm going to do. The first thing I want to show is, you know, uh, what a, a woman should be like. You know, the Bible says that Women should adorn themselves in a respectable apparel. That's First Timothy chapter two, verse, uh, verse nine. With modesty and self-control, not braided hair and gold, or pearls or costly attire. Okay, uh, but with the proper for a woman who professes godliness with good works. Okay, and I'm not going to go no further into that because that the rest of it is 
Southern for another day, another time. But the whole point is, the woman needs to be, you know, in respectable attire. You know, and what is with, with what is proper for a woman, for women who profess godliness. So, it has to be something that shows your godliness. You know, we, you know, often want to say, well, I'm not perfect. But you don't want to show, I put like this, you want God to accept your imperfections, but you don't want God to want you to be perfect. You want God to and you, you to to tell you you're okay to do whatever you want to do because I'm going to judge you in the end. Well, I don't want to see you judged. I don't want to see anybody judged. Okay. If it were up to me, everybody, including myself, could escape judgment. But no one can escape judgment. We all are going to stand before the mercy seat of God. And he's going to separate the goats from the sheep. So that means everybody um, from that, 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 that's, that's traded this side will ultimately stand before God. There's no there's no if and bust about it. But to believe that just because God is going to be the one to judge doesn't mean that we as your brothers and sisters can't come and correct you before you fall into the world. Now, I would tell anybody, you have to be mindful of false teachers. You know, John said it best. Let's go to 1 John. You know, if you got your Bible, go to 1 John real quick. I'm going to run down this with you. So that way we're all on the same page. 1 John chapter. Let's go to chapter. Go to chapter two, and let's go to verse eighteen. You know, children, in the the last hours, as you have heard that the antichrist is coming, so now may the antichrist have come. Therefore, we know that it is in the last hour. Okay, so we know that in these last days. There's going to be a lot of false teachers. There's going to be people who are going to come confessing, you know. Uh, you know, they're going to say that they're of God. You know, let's go to Matthew. The, the verse is chapter 7, verse, Matthew chapter 7, verse, uh, let's look at verse uh, 22. He says, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord. Did we not prophesy in your name and then cast out demons in your name and do many uh, mighty works in your in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work you work of lawlessness. So he's letting it be known that you know the relationship with him is important. You know it's very important to have that relationship with them and, 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 and not just the relationship but there has to be a change in your spirit if you are saying that you are preaching the gospel which she did not at one point go to the cross you know and, and, and did not speak of his death his burial or his resurrection with which in actuality that is the gospel of jesus christ uh since she did not do these things she was not preaching the gospel okay um but Let's just get away from that and just look at it for all it's worth. If you say that you are of Christ and you are of God, well, then you will want a change of heart. Now, anything that be in Christ be of new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are made new. Okay. That's what the Bible says. That's a verse, you know, and, uh, you know. You can't continue to put on the old man, as the as Paul elegantly put it before. 
you know, you have to be present towards the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. But more so than anything, we have to be looking after one another uh, in brotherly love and watchfulness. If we are not uh, seeing each other prosper, then what are, then what are we here? If, if the whole body were not, what would we be hearing? You know, uh, now I'm not saying this young woman won't be able to speak the gospel or preach and evangelize, but you know, it, it's like, how can you preach the gospel and you yourself are still looking for it. And I'm, I'm going to give you another verse in Matthew. It's just another great verse that just hit me, Lord, and I thank you for your word. And it says this. Because this is something that a lot of people say, so let's let's look at it. Judge that not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, Will you be measured? Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? And he goes on further down. He says, you hypocrite. Verse 5. You hypocrite. First take the log out your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Now, is that saying that we can't say to each other that we're wrong? That we can't come to a sound and righteous judgment? No. He's saying that by what you have measured, that's what you're going to be measured by. Okay? And he said also in that one verse, he says, you know, take the speck out of your own eye before you go and, you know, try to get the speck from your brother's eye. But that doesn't mean that now we can't preach to one another sin against sin. That means that if I can't come to you and tell you to stop sinning and I'm still doing my thing. I can't ask you to trust God, and I don't trust God. I can't tell you about how God can change lives, and I'm still living the way I want to live. I have to make a change. And let me ask you today, are you making a change in your life? If you are trying to be on the Lord's side, and you want to be on the Lord's side, are you doing what is supposed to be done to be on the Lord's side? Are you preaching from a strip pole? Are you telling people that not to talk about you, not to judge you, not to say anything against you or what you're doing, but it's okay for you to live however you want to live? Is that what the Bible says? No, not at all. Yes, Jesus did say, I, I, I come that you have life and have it more abundantly. He did say that. He said, he did say, you know, if you believe in me, you will have everlasting life. That, you know, you should have everlasting life. He did say that. He did say, you know, uh, the Son of Man did not come into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He did say that. He did, he did say he did not come to judge the righteous, but the, for sinners to repent. But it's that word repent that he wants. For sinners to repent. A change. To change your heart. How can you preach to someone and you haven't changed your heart? You know, he, it was a time when the Lord asked the priest to stop doing anything. He didn't even want them to do sacrifices because they hadn't changed their heart. Where is your heart today? What do you want from life? I want to get one. What do you want from the Lord? Or are you just 
future from a strip club? Are you ready to come out among the heathens and the hypocrites? Are you ready to make a change in your life? Are you ready to move to your next level? Because God can't allow you to go around and preach his word in air. I'm not talking about you made some mistakes. I'm not talking about, you know, you... You're, you're trying to, to pick yourself up. But while you're trying to pick yourself up, it is not time for you to be preaching from the strip pole. It's time for you to come off the pole. Put on the, core, the, the proper clothes of righteousness and of godliness and of holiness and of, of what God of meekness and affection. The way the Lord will want you to be presented. Now, I don't know about the, about you, but I don't think the Lord want to see me still the way I was 10 years ago, or five years ago, or four years ago. He wants to see a change in me. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was doing my wrong, and when I heard that voice inside my heart tell me that it's time to change, I didn't hurt in my heart. Young woman, I don't know who you are, and I don't want to judge you and tell you you were the worst person in the world. I don't even see you as that. Your words, the things you say, you're on your way to where you need to go to. You seem to know the word pretty well. But are you willing to change? The scribes knew the word of God. They weren't, they weren't new to it. They knew the Bible. They weren't new to it. They weren't new to who Jesus was or what the Messiah was supposed to be. They weren't new to any of it. They, The devil himself knows the word of God. He knows Jesus. He stood in front of him. He trembles at the sound of his name. He stood before his throne. You can't serve God and, and, and the devil. You can't be unequally yoked. Be you unequally yoked together. For what communion has light with darkness, and what, what profit has God with bail? None, I'll tell you. None, not at all. There has to be a change. Yes, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. But with that comes a responsibility for change. Are you all ready to change today? I love each and every last one of you. And if you like, bow your heads and pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are, our master, our father, and our friend. Lord, we ask that you be with us, Lord. Lord, be in our hearts and our minds. Help us to be like you, Lord. Lord, help us to put off our old man and put on the new. Lord, let us be ready for your coming. If, you, if you're not saved, say this prayer with me. Lord, I'm sorry. I've done some wrong. I've sinned against you. I'm not perfect. I did what I did, and I'm sorry. But Lord, I believe your word. It says that if I confess you and believe in you, you are faithful and just to cleanse me of my sins and cleanse me of my unrighteousness. Lord, forgive my sins today. Forgive my unrighteousness today. And I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. Lord, where you are, I want to be. I thank you for being my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, that's my time, and I got to go. I don't need to go get some sleep. If y'all can't tell, I'm very sleepy. <laughs> well, uh, this is your boy, Michelle. Have a nice day.